will go ahead and get this council meeting called to order. Please rise for a moment of reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Here. Mrs. Hoover? Here. Ms. Royce? Here. Ms. Bowling? Here. Mrs. Winterbauer? Here. Mr. Gurton? Here. Mr. Braden? We have six members present. Moving on to amendment of the agenda. We have three amendments. First item is to remove the February 13th minutes. Second item is to add a finance committee report from February 27th. And the third item is to add a small business and economic development committee report from February 19th. Mrs. Franzen. Uh, I move that we amend the agenda as stated. Motion by Mrs. Franzen to amend the agenda as stated. Ms. Royce. I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Royce. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen. Yes. Mrs. Hoover. Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Ms. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Moving on to special presentations. Chief McCabe? Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, this is a brief version of our annual report. Our normal annual report looks something like this. Download a copy, it's usually available by PDF. Uh, Safety Service Director and the Mayor get a copy of this one as soon as we submit it, actually submit it today. So you should have it in your email box. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Norwood Fire Department. Um, 52 members strong with two civilian clerks this composite actually was just done by one of our newest members ed coles he has a passion for photography our last one was done in 2007 so we thought it was time to <laughs> update the station we actually have composite pictures as far back as 1930 hanging in the fire station it's pretty cool so Norwood fire department i'll give a brief overview of staffing we've got uh, we're staffed at 52 total positions right now we're one short um, basically, we operate with three platoons. Um, each platoon has 16 members assigned who work 24 hour shifts, and then they're off for 48. So, those guys um, basically work 40 hour work week. Most people work 40 hours, these guys work 48. Um, and then we do have an administrative team that consists of myself, the assistant chief, uh, staff captain, uh, two fire inspectors, and then the civilian staff, the uh, bureau clerk, and the secretary. Um, we do have a daily minimum of at least 12 members on the 24-hour shifts um, through the CBA just to ensure we have the proper staffing to do the job. So this is an organizational table uh, that basically shows the chain of command. Essentially, the assistant chief and I work in tandem uh, supervising the, the three platoons and then the, the Bureau of Fire Safety and the staff captain. Um, generally speaking, it's a, we're a good team in terms of how we operate. And of course, in my absence, he, he takes on the role of fire chief. <clears throat> so this graphic shows your, your total service. Um, generally speaking, we like to see these kind of equal as we migrate through. Um, 
One caveat, uh, we have a few employees in that one to five that actually have multiple years of pension service through other fire departments. So their years of experience aren't reflected here. This really just shows their years of service for the Norwood Fire. Next year, this will actually level out the one to five and the six to 10 should be pretty, pretty even. Um, you'll notice in the 20 plus, we've got a pretty heavy contingent of employees there. We pretty much didn't hire anyone between the years of 2003 and 2009. And then again, between uh, mid-16 and uh, mid-2020. So we had some stretches where we didn't hire anybody. And so that's kind of reflected in that middle as well. <clears throat> we do have about 10 employees who could retire at any time. Um, our first really anticipated retirement may be next year. We'll see. So we'll just go into the response. Just really just, uh, hey, this is what we do in terms of... Um, what we do as a fire department, not just emergency responses, but the other things we do as well. We'll give you a kind of a brief overview of our, of our incident. And I, and I pretty much do this, what are the typical questions the fire chief gets? You know, they want to know things like, what's the average response time for an emergency call? Well, in Norwood, you're very lucky. From the time the, the call is received in the fire station to the time they're on the scene, it's an amazing three minutes, 12 seconds. So that is outstanding. <laughs> Three minutes, 12 seconds. Um, now, this doesn't, take, of course, take in, in part the, the time when the homeowner's dialing 911, going through the dispatch center, and then a call being toned out. But they have to operate within a time frame of under 90 seconds. So even adding that 90 seconds to this number, we're well below the national standard of five, and a half, five minutes, 30 seconds. Um, it's important, right? This is what you pay for. You want to get quick, reliable service and you're getting professional service in a timely fashion. Most common run type. Well, you know, we're the fire department, right? We, we were established in 1905 here in Norwood uh, to fight fires, but we've taken on additional responsibilities through the year. Our most common calls now are EMS calls. Uh, about 70% of our responses are, have something to do with emergency medicine. Um, with that being said, about 65% of those are, are basic calls and 35% of those calls are for true advanced life support uh, emergencies. <clears throat> so this is the one I worry about. How many times do we have calls that overlap, meaning that we've got units out on the road and another emergency comes in? Nor is fortunate we've got some redundancies built in. We actually staff two ambulances. We have two fire engines and then one ladder truck so we can handle multiple calls, but 30%. So think of this. We have one run, two runs, and a third run. Well, on top of that third one, that fourth run is gonna hit at the same time. Maybe not identically at that time, but during that, that emergency response, we're gonna have another run, typically. And that's a big deal. This is pretty consistent nationally. Um, we're just in a better position to, to handle that. Um, we're unique in the fact that we're surrounded by Cincinnati and generally they don't play well in terms of the mutual aid piece. They're getting better. Uh, they've had some changes, but um, for us, our next closest mutual aid partner is St. Bernard. Um, and we, we, we do work with them often. Mutual aid calls. So this, is, this has been a hot topic and these, these have increased over the last couple of years for us. Um, many of you probably don't know the fire station closest to us in the north and, and Golf Manor closed uh, two years ago. And so we see some changes in service delivery and we've also seen some changes in terms of what we are requiring for service delivery here. <clears throat> we've received it 147 times, but we've given it only 142. Now I'll caution you with this number, it's really deceiving. In terms of the received, when we receive municipal aid, primarily fire calls, we're getting three different vehicles coming to help us. When we give mutual aid, we're only sending one out. So that's, that's prevalent to that. We have an uh, innate responsibility to protect this town. We know that we don't have a whole lot of people around us that can help us should we send more out. So we, we maintain that one piece going out for us. <clears throat> Busier time of day. Any guesses? Lunchtime. <laughs> Now, this is where perception becomes reality for the firemen because they're always busy at lunchtime. <laughs> but generally speaking, our, our busiest times are between 11 and 1 and uh, between 4 p.m. and uh, 7 p.m. Largely related to rush hour traffic 
I don't know if you guys drive 71 very often northbound between 3 and uh, 6, but it's not fun. <clears throat> Busier day? Any guesses? Friday. None. There, it pretty much, pretty much goes across the board, right? It, it is a thing. Uh, when I was riding the paramedic, you know, I never wanted to work Sundays because Sundays seemed like they were crazy busy. But when you look at the data, it actually shows that it's almost a straight line across. Uh, our, our run volume is pretty stable in terms of, of the days. <clears throat> Total fire loss. <clears throat> this is a number from a firefighter's perspective that we want to make sure we're reporting. And, and we don't report loss. We report save um, and dollar save. It's, it's a big deal in terms of economic viability. Last year, fire department had $5 million in property saved from fire experience. You know, if we really want to talk in the old school terms, it would have been around $750,000 lost, but we actually saved over $5 million in property last year. That's a big number. So our total incident numbers, uh, this will just give you a, a really bird's eye view of what, what was responding on that fire station every day. Medic 82 made almost 3,000 runs. Medic 282 made 800 something. The engines are about 1,600 and 1,000, and the latter made just over 650. Now, that's an average of about 19 vehicle responses out of that fire station on a daily basis. That doesn't include when they're going out for a smoke detector installation or you know, someone needs help getting up the steps. These are strictly emergency responses. They still do some. So. Total vehicle responses over 7,000. So that's a, that's a lot for a fire department that's servicing three square miles. So quick run over what the fire department does. Obviously we do EMS, um, largest percent of our responses that we know. Uh, we are extremely fortunate to have top, highly skilled employees providing emergency medical care to our citizens and visitors. Um, we've been supported by city administration in terms of upgrading our, our EMS fleet and equipment. Uh, was certainly helpful. While COVID was not fun for anybody, the funding certainly helped the fire department immensely in terms of getting into the, the next level <clears throat> with the support of the administration. Fire suppression. Obviously, that's why the fire department exists. Like I said, since 1905, Norwood has had a professionally staffed fire department. Uh, fire prevention. That's the proof in the pudding. Um, if you think about the number of government programs that have invested money continually and you're like, what, what are we getting out of our money? Billions of dollars have been invested in fire prevention since the 1970s when uh, a white paper report came out called America's Burning. And we can actually show that once the instance of fire prevention was hitting the school, stop, drop, and roll, take care uh, you know, of your oily rags, that the fire incidents in the United States started doing this. Now, what we do now Still have the, we still see a decline in actual fires. What we are dealing with is the promulgation or the enormous rapid spread of fire because of household products. The number of synthetics and plastics that are in your, your house today is way different than when the guys were fighting fires in the 70s and it was wool and wood furniture. So while we see a rapid expansion of fire, they're just not happening as much. Fire safety inspections, uh, you know, that's an important piece. We've done those forever. Uh, if you look at old pictures, they used to advertise home inspections by the fire department. You could actually call the fire department and ask, hey, will you come do a fire safety check? We still do that. People generally don't want us in their house, um, which I get. It's all good. Uh, but these go hand in hand with the fire prevention efforts we do. Hazmat mitigation. Um, we are in a central hub in terms of the amount of hazardous materials that are running our interstates, 562, 71, and of course the rail lines. Uh, we have a rail storage yard basically just in the northern part of our district, but we also have two large chemical companies who are two of our larger employers in the area. They're also two of our better corporate citizens in terms of their involvement with the fire department and, and planning for that. We actually do a joint training with both companies in the fall with all three shifts um, to, to work through that experience. Um, so it's a fantastic So It's actually a model training that the, the people who provide it are, are sharing with, with regions. <clears throat> hydrant maintenance, uh, Captain Meyer is in charge of this. We check every fire hydrant in the spring. We also check them in the winter and check them multiple times in the winter. So if they have water in them in the winter time, we pump them out and then we put them on the list and we continue pumping them out. Um, just while it's a respreeding. So you see the fire department trucks out and they're touching the fire hydrants, you know what they're doing. Um, the, like I said, Captain Meyer runs this. 
huge shout out to uh, Public Works uh, Superintendent Clint Zimmerman, to Jimmy Krubs and his crew. They're fantastic uh, in working in collaboration with the fire department and, and maintaining and trying to push forward with hydrant replacements. They're, they're a huge uh, asset to us as well. Post testing requirement uh, annually, not only from an NFPA standard, but from Ohio Administrative Code. Uh, we test every piece of fire hose in the fire department annually. Captain Cardovelis is in charge of this. We're testing upwards of 12,500 linear feet of hose every year. It takes us about a month to get done. Um, so just a time pressure test, but it's just manpower intensive and takes a lot. SCBA maintenance. So SCBA, the big air tanks in the back, you know, they get the mask. Um, SCBA stands for self-contained breathing apparatus. We actually do all of our uh, repairs in-house. We have... Lieutenant Donovan running the program, Scott Mumper, Kyle Frankenfield, Frankenfield, Travis Smith, they've all been certified to actually take these apart, put them back together, make the repairs, and test them annually. We also test every firefighter for their face piece. They're actually issued their own individual face piece that we test them for it, and we know, we know it fits. And um, they all go through a rigorous inspection and maintenance process. Interesting topic. We think about respiratory protection. We've taken this seriously for a long time in the fire service. You know, fire, firemen are really subject to a lot of cancers, and we get it at a higher incidence rate than the general public, except one. That's lung cancer. We actually have a lower incidence of lung cancer across the nation because of respiratory protection, how serious it is. And, and it's a requirement from the federal, federal government, too. Um, incident reporting. Every run that we do, it generates a written report. Each one of those reports is quality assurance checked. We do it on a daily basis. Captain Chibby is in charge of this. They get uh, sent every month to the state of Ohio State Fire Marshal's Office. They also get sent to the United States Fire Administration. Uh, we have a duty to re report our fire experience, and we generally send them all of our data. And then so much. We have to maintain, right? Apparatus maintenance, ladder testing, pump testing, radio servicing, programming, personal protective equipment. We do inspect all of our personal protective equipment every year, um, and, and we test it to a certain level. Um, tool maintenance, EMS equipment. I've got uh, Lieutenant Tim LaFevers, Lieutenant Doug Duell, Lieutenant Jeff Lackmeyer, Lieutenant Jimmy Lee, Lieutenant Eric Blevins. They handle a large portion of this for the fire department. Make sure we'll be good at that. That's a lot, right? I mean, that's a, that's a fair number of things that we do on a regular basis in addition to making runs. So I want to kind of touch on the fire inspection piece. It's really important. Um, this, we actually have our own bureau. It's called the Bureau of Fire Safety. Um, they handle the majority of our inspection services for our industrial and commercial uh, clients, we call them, or customers in the city. Oftentimes, these guys are the they're the first, one of the first city representatives that the people meet from our city, you know, with Mark Reeves and, and maybe people from health, the Board of Health. But they're ambassadors, if you will, of what the city can bring to them, and they do a great job. Um, the assistant chief, Brody Sincielo, is, is really overseeing this program. We do building inspections, not only that, permitted um, plans reviews. It's a lot. Joe Jones uh, is our, one of our investigators, inspectors. He is actually now, this year, the longest serving fire inspector in history. And Brandon Smith, a classmate, both of them are classmates actually, but Brandon Smith was promoted to the inspector's position a couple years ago and they do a great job. Nancy Allen is a, our, one of our civilian employees. She's a Bureau of Fire Safety clerk, does an amazing job of managing so much data. Um, you wanna know, who's involved with some of the buildings, call the fire department, we could probably tell you. So we, we did almost 2,000 code enforcement activities last year just from the Bureau and from the shifts. Uh, and included 246 permit inspections. Those are required by the state of Ohio, and these companies who are permitted actually pay a fee to have a permit, um, unless you're a church, obviously. 464 non-permitted inspections. Think of those as your, non -com your, your commercial based businesses, but they're not doing anything crazy. Like they don't have welding gas, and they don't have any sprinkler systems. They just get done annually. Um, we've done, we do about 112 multifamily residential inspections each year. We only do multifamilies now that are seven units or higher. Those are the high life safety ones that we're concerned about. And we do have a large number of two, three, and four families. The four families we get into, they're the same. They're, they're identical footprint, and we're really only doing common areas. It's, it's kind of a, I won't say a waste of manpower, but 
we could probably utilize that in a different format, and that's what we've decided to do. Big one here, 137 college rental home inspections completed last year. Uh, the college rentals in this town are immense, and this is important to the fire department, has been for a long time. Um, just because of the number of units that are here, the types of renters, we're talking about 18 to 22 year olds who've never been away from home, don't really understand how these systems work, and just make it a little partying on the weekends, we'll say. Um, but there's a, there's a high number of these people living in these homes and they become high profile incidents. We've been very fortunate that our fire prevention program, we've only had one real serious fire and luckily it was during the daytime. We've not had any real serious incidents since 2017 in a college home. Numerous reinspections, adoption inspections, pre-construction meetings, referrals make up the balance of the activities. Those guys, um, kudos to those. They're, they're, they do a, a fantastic job. We're very fortunate to have full-time inspecting staff for the city. So nuts and bolts of it. Oh, I'm sorry. We also did 15 fire incidents. Um, Inspector Smith is also part of the Hamilton County Fire Investigative Unit. We lend him out um, to uh, other agencies, and he, he actually works with this unit. And we also bring them in to help inspect some of our fires. We have a, a large fire that maybe we're not really equipped to handle and need some assistance on. So nuts and bolts of it, all right? Let's talk about the money. So this is, this is a general picture of general fund expenditures in the city. You see red's fire, blue's police, black is city hall, recreation, and rec. So this is a pretty typical expenditure list if you look at an urban environment. Um, somewhere between 60, 66 percent of general fund expenditures in urban cities are spent on public safety. Um, Norwood's in, unusual, right? We have a in, immensely dense uh, population here within three square miles, almost 7,000 people per square mile. This is why you, you see those expenditures and say, okay, we've got a pretty dense population. We're surrounded by a, a metropolitan city. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty typical. But from a fire department perspective, um, this is what it looks like. So blue is the, the largest piece, right? That's, that's our personal services expenses. That's the, the manpower expense, basically. Um, huge shout out to the city administration for this one because in 2016, this, this is 91% of our budget goes to personal services. When they came into office, we were right around 98% of our budget was on personal services. So the mayor and the safety service director, Murphy, at that time um, wanted to know what was going on, what we needed, and we were able to show them, like, this is what we need. We've got to have these things. And we've progressively gotten better. And this is it's pretty close to what a normal professional fire department would look like. It's, it's anywhere between 88 and 92% for, for your budget breakdown. So we're, we're doing pretty well. We've got a little bit of work to do, but... Um, you know, it's a, that's a huge change from what we were used to over the last, last few years. Let's talk about strengths. Norwood Fire Department, you know, I've been, I've been with this agency since 2000. I'm very proud of the things that have occurred over the last 24 years. Um, and I'll tell you, we've, we've got a highly trained workforce. Um, these guys put in thousands and thousands of hours in training, education, drilling annually. A lot of that's directed by Captain Josh Giles, who does an amazing job with our training program. We've got dedicated employees. Um, you don't hear about the fire department losing employees all that often. If you look at it and from a standard, of every nine of our ten employees that we hire will retire from the Norwood Fire Department. And it's actually a little higher than that, but let's go with round numbers. Nine of ten hirees will retire out of the Norwood Fire Department. That's pretty awesome. Um, and we're lucky too because we're taking firefighters away from places like Mason, from Washington Township and Columbus. They want to come work here. And um, those guys are great pickups and they're cost savings to the city because they're already trained. <laughs> Tenured officer group. Uh, right now in the city of Norwood Fire Department, you have 104 years of officer experience. That's enormous. Uh, Captain Cardavellis is our longest tenured fire officer, 21 years. And I'm right there with, uh, right behind them, about 17. Um, so we're lucky in that regard. We've had a couple newer officers promoted, but in terms of stability, rock solid. 
and we're doing a really, I think, a, a much better job of, of succession planning and trying to get our junior officers to understand the roles that they're going to see or may already do in an acting capacity, but also let them know, hey, this is what the, the chief's office needs to be doing. So if something happens uh, to myself or and Brody at the same time, God forbid, at least someone understands the role and they can do it. Um, and and I, I think this is one of our, our biggest strengths is we, we maintain a constant financial or uh, fiscal awareness. Um, we watch our expenditures to the penny. I can tell you if you ask me to say, hey, what is in the personnel key left today? I'd say, I'll get back to you in two minutes and I'll have an answer to you to the penny. We know exactly where we're at. We know exactly where we need to be. We provide um, pretty rock solid numbers in terms of our projections. You know, I would say, look, we, we try to we try to project over time. That's just a roll of the dice sometimes. If someone gets hurt or multiple people get hurt, that's a trouble. But in terms of, of what we're looking for, um, in terms of providing adequate numbers to city administration, to, to you all who, who have to make decisions, we're right there on it and we're ready to do that. In as much as we actually start our budget process in June, July, our first iteration of our budget is ready to go by August, and then that one will get revised probably six times before it hits safety service director's office. We constantly look at what are pricing, what are trends, what are we looking at in terms of stuff that's expensive, public safety is expensive. But um, the past few years, the, the rate of expenses going up has just been astronomical and it's almost impossible to, to really keep a handle on it. Kelly Brown, the fire chief secretary, is really the linchpin for this for us. While we've always had a pretty good idea, when she came on board, we really had a good idea, and she's taken a lot of that off the plate of the assistant chief and myself, but allows us to really focus on some operational issues that we're trying to get done. Weaknesses, you know, we all, all as an organization, doesn't matter if you're super strong, you always have a weakness. We have a few, and we have an aging firehouse. The firehouse is uh, turning 50 this year, just like the fire chief. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's old. Average use of service for firehouses is really around 50 years. Um, it's a good building, but we, we really need to take a look at it and say, hey, what should we do with this? You know, we need to do a comprehensive assessment of this building to see what, what is it doing in terms of provision of service, not only for the citizens, but for the people working there. Um, we, we've had a lack of adherence to a dedicated fleet replacement program. Um, we have to have these vehicles to provide service. Now, um, this current administration came in and got us straight with our ambulance fleet. We got a fire truck order. We replaced a ladder truck with a used one from the city. So this isn't a dig. This is more of a, this is what happens when you don't adhere to dedicated fleet purchasing. Um, really, really be thinking about that. And we're, we're proactively trying to get on that schedule. We're close. We're really close. Uh, you know, I, I say this, and I've said it for a long time, um, if you ever get elected to council, you'll always get an email from me inviting you to come to the fire station to have a tour, have a chat. And I tell people the same thing every time. I said, this city needs a master planning document, not just from the fire chief's perspective, just from an employee perspective, someone who used to live here. We need a master planning document. And that is enormous. And that, that's helpful for departments, too. Um, it kind of leads me into the, the no strategic plan for the fire department. So as fire chief, this is, this is a retirement goal for me. Um, we've not had one. Uh, we've talked about getting it done, and it's, it's like it's right there. We're, we're ready to scratch it and get moving. But it's not just the fire department either. Right? This is going to take involvement from you, the stakeholders, from the community. And we say, hey, we're doing this. We really want you to be involved and say, what do you want your fire department to look like? What can we do to augment our services to better serve you? <clears throat> um, lack of dedicated training facility. You know, it's hard to have these things. They're, they're expensive. Um, where do you put them? We're in the urban core, obviously. There, we have a couple of spots we'd like to throw one in. Um, we've looked at what the, it looks like from a, from a cost perspective. Can we do it um, on our own and, and utilize shipping containers? You see the, the structure in the bottom picture is actually a new structure at Scarlet Oaks that we've utilized. Just make it really hard when we got to pack up all our stuff and take a couple guys out to do training and come back and get a couple more guys and do training. It's not exactly. Fantastic. Cincinnati has been very um, gracious in terms of letting us send some guys down there, but we really aren't able to do dedicated shift 
training just because of the logistics. It's really difficult. And then we, we truly have a lack of diversity within the uniform workforce. While we have a couple minorities, um, we don't have any women. Um, we don't have any African Americans. And it's a tough, tough thing to try and deal with the civil service environment because you're really just beholden to those people who actually submit an application and then take the test and then get into those tiers. So we recognize that as a weakness. We think it's uh, important to reflect the community that we serve. Um, and we're working towards that. So you guys are probably sitting there like, really, how can we help you, Chief? What, what can we do to make this, make this better for everyone? So a couple things. This is important. We really need to, to really take a comprehensive look at the fire department, do a complete assessment. Now I'm working with um, Safety Service Director Powers, with the project manager, um, Darren Hackward. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, Darren. Um, <laughs> and we're trying to get this done. It's a, it's a big deal. I mean, when you start talking about a building that was built 50 years ago, um, you know, this is back when everyone smoked. This is when women weren't in the fire service. Um, almost near the, the energy crisis. So back when this building was originally built, none of the windows opened. Um, firefighting is designated a class one carcinogen. It is a job occupation listed as a carcinogen because of what we're exposed to on a daily and regular basis. We're doing everything we possibly can to try and remediate that from a standpoint of diesel exhaust. Um, that was a really big one that I was pushing for when the administration came and we got that accomplished first year. Um, extractors. Uh, I was just at a conference in Miami for Firefighter Cancer Initiative and the city of Buffalo at one time only had one working extractor for their entire fire department. It's about 30 stations. We actually have three now. We had one way in, uh, well, I got hurt and had to do grant writing. I got a grant for one back in 20, 2002. Um, we then upgraded another one uh, a few years ago. And then last year, the assistant chief did a remediation grant with BWC, which specifically provides money for cancer remediation. So we actually have three of those where we can actually clean the gear. Um, we're hoping to get a, a SCBA decon machine this year. Um, we try to limit the, the exposure, but when this station was built, there wasn't hot zones, warm zones, cold zones. Heck, the guys used to sleep with their gear upstairs in the room. I mean, that's changed. There's so much more science in firefighting now than there ever has been before. Back even when I got hired, it was put your pack on, kid, let's go fight fire, and don't put that on until you really need it. Well, nowadays, it's wear it every, all the time, and, and we're getting smarter. Help us maintain our fleet purchasing schedules and assist us in capital planning. Um, I think it's really important from a city perspective that when we start talking about capital expenditures, that everyone's on the same page. Let's talk about what that looks like. How much money is being sent, spent on these things? They're expensive. I mean, fire trucks, our last fire truck we bought in 2022 was $630,000. If I bought that truck today, it's over a million. It's unbelievable. National pricing for fire apparatus and ambulances has gone up 54% in five years. And we, we know this, right? And we, we're trying to adequately plan for it. Um, it's just a number of things that are, are contributing to it. Lack of workforce for the manufacturers, supply chain issues. Um, I just have not been able to put my finger on what actually has increased 54% other than eggs, probably. Um, right now, our estimates right now for engine replacement and a ladder replacement right now, if we bought it today, would be around $850,000 for the engine uh, and about $1.4 million for the ladder truck. And that's if we ordered it today, it wouldn't be here until 2027. So it's important in terms of when you're looking at these things and say, we've got a plan for these purchases, get them done, get them in the process. And, and we've been good about it. We, we got an ambulance ordered in 2022. It was supposed to be delivered this year until last September. And I get a phone call from our rep and says, sorry, it's going to be in 2025. So we have an ambulance on order now. And I need to order another one this year so it gets here in 2027. It's crazy. You know, we, want to, we want to buy ambulances every three years. The way we do it, we rotate these things. It's from a maintenance perspective. They actually serve nine years to the fire department, and then they 
go to someplace else. We'll auction them off. There's still value to them when we auction them off, but they've, they've done their service to the Norwood Fire Department. Fire engines, every eight years. Fire trucks basically have a 25 year life service um, because uh, we carry three fire engines. We keep two in service all the time, but we also keep one in reserve status because of maintenance. We also recall staff if we have a fire. We get people back in to ma manage that, that engine so they can make other responses within the city. Um, it's important for us to have it. Our next fire truck will be retired at the end of 2025, and right now we won't have anything to, to do that with. Now, we've been in that position before. This isn't a, oh no, but it's, it's not ideal, but like I said, planning helps alleviate these things. And we're, with the, the help of city administration, we're really trying to get that thing done. Uh, master planning, this is, I think you guys really, as a group, should envision, what, is, what does this look like? There was some discussion, I think, last year about master planning. You know, the FRP really isn't a master planning guide. Um, it's a vehicle to that. It's certainly a component. But we really want to have a, what's the total view? Because then we can sit down as department heads together and say, what do we need to do to help facilitate that mission? Now, I know that I'm here to protect the lives and properties of the citizens of Norwood and its visitors. But what else are we supposed to be doing as a fire department for this city? And this will help guide those, those kinds of decisions. So I want to show you what, the, what we're operating off of right now. This is the current FRP, as voted upon last year. So, you know, this is, this is the only capital planning document we have to operate with. And so if you see this right here, <clears throat> not a lot there. Um, you know, we, we did the ambulance purchase. That's actually getting pushed back, so it's going to change. What the fire department does, we do actually a 10-year planning document, and we send these over with our budget request. So if you look at 2023, that's actually what we requested, and that's what was funded, minus the $250,000 for the remodel of the bathrooms, because we opted to say, let's take a step back. We're seeing enormous amounts of maintenance going to that building. We probably need to do the assessment. Um, <clears throat> 2024, this is what was request was for. We start paying off that fire engine. Um, this will be the fourth of five payments on that. Uh, we want to do the SCVA decon station. We have another HVAC upgrade piece. The engineering in terms of the fire, fire station assessment. And then we have uh, some second floor carpet we want to replace. Uh, actually remove and probably put hard service down. Then you go to 2025 and 2026. And I'm only giving you the, the first three years. Um, if you want, you can always call and, and ask for it. I'm happy to provide our, our tenure plan. Um, we see some significant increases in costs. Realistically, from 2025 on out, you have about $850,000 a year investment in capital improvements to the fire department. Significant. Public safety is expensive. Now, we're trying to offset some of that. If you look at um, next year, $450,000 for SCBAs. The fire department last bought SCBAs in 1996. Not to say we weren't able to get new versions in 2001 and then again in 2014, but our air packs are deteriorating at a rate that's not savable. We really have to replace them next year. That's a $450,000 project. Now, we're submitted for a grant last year to try and cover that. <clears throat> and they actually thought, hey, we'll, we'll throw some money in here just in case we got a, a $50,000 match for it. Problem is, I've got to have money in that fund to buy them in case we don't get the grant. I'm, I'm pretty confident. I mean, I, I like to think we've been pretty successful. Ever in my career, we've done around $3.2 million in grants from the fire department. Um, we'll see. We're actually, for the first time, going to use a little bit of our, our budget to have a professional writer go over it just to make sure we're doing everything we can to potentially capture those funds. Um, and then you look at 2026, when we should be starting paying on another fire truck, uh, fire engine and a ladder truck, um, garage doors, the fill station, the, the actual apparatus that fills our SCBA valves, the, that's 1996. So we've got some things coming. So I bring this back up, and I, I want to be fair. There was a high confidence that this was the last FRP we were going to do and that we would be out of fiscal emergency. And so, you know, hey, that's, let's go, let's get out. But we didn't. Um, and this is, from a planning perspective, you guys pay me to plan. You pay me to, to really plan for the fire department's emergencies. What do we need to have next? What are the upcoming issues we may see? You can't do that with this. So from a council's perspective, this is really important. Um, 
you know, we'll see the next iteration of the FRP. Hopefully that's taken care of. We'll go from there. So how else can you help? Like I said before, if you're asked to be a stakeholder or discussion with the fire department, please do so. That's here. It's also out in the community. We really value and respect your opinions. We need those. Um, it's, a strategic document isn't worth anything if the fire chief does it all on his own. <coughs> I, I, would, I would encourage the city to be open to public-private partnerships. We're really trying to engage in a, in a pot, potential one of these for a training facility. We always know that if we can engage private uh, public partnerships, especially with an educational facility, we would reap enormous benefits from that, not just from an educational training standpoint, but from a recruiting one as well. Um, and I would say consider earmarking all fire department revenue generated from any fire department service into a specified fire department capital fund. Now that's, that's not a fix all, all of a sudden, hey, we did that and it's fixed. Um, that really has to be done in terms of a comprehensive fiscal planning. Like we know what we're generating on an annual basis. What do we have to have? Because this money still goes in the general fund. It's not like it's not going to anything. So it'd be money coming out of the revenue stream that goes dedicated to something. But we could, we could know, hey, this is always going there. And then do we need to supplement it? Can we get it to a place where that takes care of everything? We don't know. So we, we try to be very, very thoughtful about uh, our revenue generation. <sighs> Workforce diversity. I think uh, the DEI um, advisory board is doing good things with that and bringing that discussion to the table. Um, I've been encouraged in terms of when I've attended those meetings to have those discussions. Um, but we're going to need some help recruiting. We need to think about different recruitment tactics. Um, is there a program we could institute to, that really drives minority recruitment to the fire department? Um, we, we struggle with that. You know, Cincinnati has generally done a much better job of getting minority recruits. Although I will say our last, our last test, we probably had the highest amount of minority applicants that we've ever seen, which is a good indication, but we need to continue doing that. Um, but I, I will say this. Most importantly, engage, your, engage the, the staff at the fire department. This is your fire department, right? Um, stop over, have a cup of coffee, ask them questions, see what their day is like, do a ride along. Um, that will fundamentally change your decision-making process because now you've got intimate knowledge of what happens in the firehouse. What is a daily routine like? What do you see? And then hear, hear the voices of the staff that say, we need this, and this is why. Uh, so I encourage you all to, to do that. Um, I know a number of you have, and I appreciate the, the fact that uh, those that stop by continue to do so. The safety service director, I think, has his own coffee cup there. <laughs> Good. But, you know, and, and I will tell you, the guys appreciate that. And I think from a, a unionized workforce, that is really important. Um, it, it brokers trust. Um, and they're able to have those conversations. So I would encourage you guys to do that. Any questions? I want to do that. I'm just keep my staff up there. Kudos to them. They do an amazing job on a daily basis. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thanks for coming in and talking to us. Um, would you mind? Be, would you be able to email this PowerPoint to everyone? Sure. Awesome. Um, I also had a question, and maybe this. I, I'm not sure who answers these calls, um, but just like everywhere, overdoses are an issue. Um, do you guys answer it primarily, or is it the police? And if so, has there been any like changes or trends in, in that? So. I was serving in the medic unit during the height of the opioid crisis, really. It was 2007, 2008 for this city. It was enormous. Um, and that promoted, and it was still pretty, pretty prevalent. Um, we've seen a decrease. Um, I don't know what, what the relation was to it, whether it's moved away from us, but I think regionally we've seen a decrease. Um, we certainly aren't ordering Narcan by the case anymore where we were. Um, I think the educational, the education of that community has certainly helped. Um, the prevalence of Narcan has probably reduced our call volume. Um, and then there's some ancillary medicines that help uh, those afflicted with that disease that were probably helping us. So um, what, what scares us a little bit is the, the fentanyl, the, the synthetic piece, because it's where we used to be able to go out and give one dose of Narcan and, hey, it's a miracle, we're giving three, four, and maybe getting just a little bit of correction to potentially get them to the hospital. So, But those are as prevalent as they used to be. Thank goodness. That was, that was a tough time. 
Yes, sir. Do you, do you all get a chance to work with the building department to plan for um, larger um, infrastructure buildings or things like that that are happening? Yeah, so for, from a commercial standpoint, we have uh, put in request and by code, they're required to have the authority having jurisdiction for fire stuff, that's me. Um, do do plans reviews for fire protection systems. Um, we, we're at a deficit a little bit just because we don't have our own in-house, um, I guess, uh, building commissioner. We have a contract who, with someone who does it, um, but uh, we, we struggle a little bit with communication. But it gets done. I mean, there's there's a piece that it has to happen, and we, we've got to have these things. And um, we've been trying to get more engaged with it from a just building that communication piece. Uh, the assistant chief and I try to attend you know, the Board of Zoning Appeal meetings. We try to be at Planning Commission meetings just to keep our eyes on what's going on. As you all know, we've got a lot of things coming down our, our way in terms of building, and that'll be interesting. <laughs> so from a fire department perspective, it's really important that we we see those and then are able to ask questions. And safety service director has certainly helped us with that. Um, it's been a big focus of mine, you know, since that office answers to him and I answered him, that's a great place to start. So he's been very helpful in terms of facilitating that. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chief. Um, I also would like to thank you so much for coming in. I've had the opportunity to sit with you and have lots of conversations. Uh, I always appreciate uh, your institutional knowledge about Norwood, um, and um, I really think you bring a really important perspective, and I always appreciate that. Uh, I also want to share, I was actually talking with my neighbor the other day, uh, she said she had to call the squad at 2 in the morning, I said, you know, why'd you, why didn't you call me? She's like, it was 2 in the morning, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but she <laughs> said the fire department was there like in 30 seconds. And that's the one thing that I have heard over and over and over. The response time is ridiculously fast. And when you are there, you are, not you, the department, <laughs> your staff uh, are always incredibly kind, incredibly respectful. Um, and I just, I've, I've shared that with some of them, but and I'd like for you to also know that. Thank you. Um, also, if you want to just see grown men with huge childlike smiles, take them food. <laughs> it's the best feeling ever. You spend a few bucks on cookies and it's like Christmas at the, at the fire department. Um, so they're very, very valued. Um, and I really want to appreciate your work. And I do think, uh, you know, Mrs. Winterbauer and I had, had talked last council about wanting uh, some master planning and uh, that I believe is going to be happening. Good. So thank you very much for bringing it to our attention as well. Thank you for the kind of comments. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. I'm going home. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to the next item on the agenda is a public hearing. This is a public notice is hereby given that the city of Norwood, Ohio proposes to modify its three year community development block grant CDBG projects is funded by Hamilton County, Ohio. Norwood proposes to acknowledge a memorandum of understanding with Hamilton County to allocate $175,000 in CDBG to the Crown Avenue water main extension project. A public hearing will be held on February 27th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Norwood City Hall, 4645 Montgomery Road, Council Chambers, second floor, Norwood, Ohio, 45212. Public comment period is from February 27th, 2024 to March 5th, 2024. All comments will be considered and changes made if such changes are deemed appropriate prior to signing the amendment and those Written comments can be sent to ssd at norwoodohio.gov or the above address. So I will go ahead and declare this public hearing open with anyone to speak in favor of this matter. To please step forward and share your name. Uh, hi, Tom McCabe, Fire Chief. Um, look, this is a really important piece. Um, this will substantially increase our response times into that neighborhood. So we're not doing a right and a right and a right and over there we can come out and, and get in that neighborhood um, it also will increase fire flow in terms of the amount of water available for 
firefighting activities. So this is an enormous piece, huge proponent of this. Um, I wanted to thank the, the, the administration group for bringing us in on this early because we started talking about what this could do or what it could mean for our response. And I think it's enormously positive um, just for access. But just want to say my, my full support for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this matter? All right. Anyone to speak against this matter? Seeing as there is no one else to speak against the matter and those speaking for have already spoken, we will go ahead and declare this public hearing closed. Next item on the agenda, request to address council. First is Charlene Myers. Hello again, and thank you for having me again. Uh, we still are having our, our meals. I do have plenty of flyers up here. If anybody in the audience wants a flyer to get out to the community, uh, we're really seeking community support. I've invited Fire Chief uh, McCabe to our next meeting, our next meal. So I'm hopeful we'll have some firefighters. Of course, you're all invited. Uh, but we're really trying to feed the community. That is our mission um, at Focus Cincinnati, and we're hoping to see you know whoever can come out and help us get the word out. The next meal is March 14th, and the next uh, food pantry is. <laughs> is um, March 16th. Uh, it seems like, however, if you're going to predict the weather based on our food pantry, it's on our food pantry day because both days were snowmageddon. So, <laughs> so I'm hoping that we don't have that unusual March 16th snow day. Um, and I'm hoping the groundhog was actually right um, and we have more participants. But um, again, if anybody wants to come out, please get the word out and help us out here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next request to address council is Bishop Sonny James. Good evening. Uh, let, let me just first say that my entire five minutes, I'm looking for the clock. I, I got it here. You, you got on, it. Okay. You'll hold, hold me accountable. I could stand before you all for five days and talk endlessly about our fire department. I'm so glad that I was here tonight. Let me just share with you and to uh, echo uh, what councilwoman uh, Hoover mentioned, I personally, a few years ago, witnessed a huge mega fire right across from Ameristop. And I saw firefighters, literally one fell, trying to save the people. And then some of you know, not very long ago, our house went up in fire. And I can tell you, before we could almost literally get out of our home, the fire department was on the scene. And just to see the level of professionalism, I'm just here to say, whatever funding we need, we have corporations, we have individuals, everybody can put a few dollars together. We really need to be proactive to do whatever we can because they put their life on the line. And I've personally witnessed it. And so I'm encouraging all the residents to, uh, if you haven't had a chance to visit our local fire department, please make it a priority. These are phenomenal individuals. Now, I don't know how much time I have left, so I want to be real quick. I want to give a shout out. We did our Black History March with Xavier University and their CDI and their uh, education department and uh, Elevations, a community group, of course, and community advocates came together. It was a beautiful opportunity. But what I want to say and encourage the residents to do, uh, Ms. Charlene Myers has done a wonderful job putting flyers together. But I want to encourage the residents to meet me. And uh, they say they have 50 meals. I think she had to leave. But we're going to fill all of those. So on March 14th, any of the residents, when people are doing good work here in Norwood, we've got to come out and support it. Because if we don't support it, why would they keep doing it? So on March 14th, let's come on out. Um, 
to that. You can call me if you don't know how to reach Miss Charlene, 513-487-8843. And then likewise, years ago, I had given a 13-point plan to the city, and one of those things was more community initiatives and town hall meetings. And I'm so pleased that uh, Ms. Hoover put together uh, in Ward 4 this community conversation, and uh, I certainly plan to be there. But I encourage the residents, show up so that we together can have our voices heard. I'm just so excited. There's so many awesome things going on here. Um, just real quick, and I'll close out. Um, you know, we just celebrated, and we're still in Black History Month, but I've been receiving so many calls that we're now starting an initiative, yearly black celebration, because we shouldn't just be celebrated one month. I'm blacks 365 days out of the year. And um, the, the last thing is, I brought some folks here. I want to tell you that 37 young people have come forward so far to say, you know, I was about to do something stupid, Bishop. And because you guys have started the initiative, the call into action, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start meeting with you guys. And I don't want to shoot anybody. And I don't want to keep stealing cars. And so I want to encourage you all, when you see us out and about, Please encourage these young people because a lot of times they don't get encouragement. A lot of times all they hear is, you're bad and you're bad. Well, they act bad, okay? But they're not bad people. They just make terrible mistakes. And so I'm so pleased that already the initiative has got national recognition. Some of you may have, may have seen us on the news and even the invite to the uh, State of the Union address, March 7th. Um, of course, I won't be able to make that travel, but the team will, will go and support. And I mean, it's gaining a lot of momentum. So please support what we're trying to do. Um, and I want to just give a shout out to our mayor, because uh, as God is my witness, when we can show people that, like a family, we don't always have to hug and kiss, but when we can shake hands and we can do that publicly, it makes people feel good. And so I want to just give a shout out to our mayor who recently has shown great support to the things. Now, my last thing is Chief did mention the DEI has been supportive of a trying to help get diversity in the fire department. I think he just overlooked and forgot to mention how we've had intensive conversations about getting more uh, representation and we'll continue to have those conversations. But listen, in closing, I'm going to go. I know he's kicking me off the thing. Uh, don't <laughs> call yet. Donna on Not me. Not yet. But, uh, but really, residents, get behind our fire department, whatever you can do. And let's not leave out our police department as well. Because these guys put their lives on the line that we can have a better way of life. And give a shout out to our administration, Will Powers, who really stands and tries to really represent what this should be about diversity and coming together. So God bless you all. I've got a meeting with a bunch of attorneys, so I got to get out of here. But let's just keep moving forward, guys. Great job to each and every one of you. It's not easy. Um, Mr. Bonzo, thank you for uh, our last conversation of support. It means a lot to me. God bless you guys. Moving on to reports of standing committees. First is a finance report from February 27th. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so to the Honorable Council of the City of Norwood, Ohio, we are Committee of Finance, Budget, Audit, and Claims, to whom was referred. Uh, we reviewed uh, claims from the Law Department, also reviewed current uh, purchase orders that are still open from 2023, and then uh, we discussed having a standing meeting. So I beg to leave to submit the following report. Um, I just want to say the law department did an amazing job. I know they've gotten over 40 claims, um, but they filtered through those for us, did some research um, with public works, and we went over four claims specifically today. So we reviewed all the information provided, um, and the finance committee did approve the four claims submitted by Mr. Underwood, Mr. Weaver, Mr. Halbert, and Mr. Bridges. So thank you again to the law department for that. Uh, Mr. Miracle also reviewed um, the progress that the um, the audit, um, sorry, the, his department has done. Um, I think it was about 16 pages in total when we first got it, and he's down to four pages mm -hmm. of uh, open purchase orders from 2023. So a lot of work um, is going on there, and that's fun to see. 
Um, we also decided to approve um, and hold a standing meeting for the finance committee. Uh, we will meet uh, every fourth Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. in council chambers. Um, main initiative for that is just to continue to um, stay in communication with um, everything going on with the FRP. Uh, Mr. Moore did speak um, briefly on a claim that the city received to cover an indigenous in, I can't pronounce it. In, in, indigent. Indigent, thank you. Um, burial of an individual who um, passed in Norwood. Um, so I think Mr. Miracle is going to look into that, and we will have that um, covered as well. So respectfully submitted uh, myself, Mr. Jeff Kirton, and Mrs. Emily Franzen. Thank you. <coughs> Motion to accept the committee report. Ms. Royce? I'll move we accept the file. Second. Mrs. Hoover? I'll second. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Royce, second by Mrs. Hoover to accept the committee report. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is a small business and economic development committee report from February 19th. Thank you, Mr. Gears. To the Honorable Council of the City of Norwood, Ohio, we, your Committee of Small Business and Economic Development, to who was referred CRA applications for 4351 Pike Norwood LLC, 4631 Montgomery LLC, and 4633 Montgomery LLC, as well as a revision for the Norwood Manor LLC CRA agreement. I beg leave to submit the following report. After presentation by Mr. Mike Skelly, and in the interest of supporting small business in Norwood, we support all three CRA applications. We also support the proposed CRA revision. Respectfully submitted Sam Bowling, Chairperson, Mrs. Emily Franzen, Mrs. Susan Hoover, and Mr. Jeff Gurton. And I really apologize for my handwriting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Motion to accept the committee report. Mrs. Winterbauer? Motion to accept. Is there a second? I will second the motion to accept. Second by Mr. Gurton. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Moving on to introductory readings of ordinances and resolutions. First ordinance is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4351 Pike Norwood LLC regarding 4351 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. What's your pleasure? Mrs. Winterbauer. A motion to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Motion by Mrs. Winterbauer to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Ms. Bowling. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Bowling. Any discussion? Mr. Garden. Um, I read over this CRA when it was in committee. Uh, this is for the bingo hall, um, or what might be known as the bingo hall. Um, it is a, Ms. Hoover and I got to walk through it a few months ago. It's a complete clean out and gut of this building, and it, um, I hope, is very successful and is going to add something very nice to this bland looking section of our, our Montgomery Road. Any other, Mrs. Franzen. Uh, and thank you to um, John Atwood and the other Atwoods for coming. And sorry it took so long to get to you <laughs> of, of the agenda, but I'm excited to see uh, something come to that area. So good luck to you all. We're excited, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? Call the roll please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Please have all three readings of the ordinance. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into commu a community reinvestment area agreement with 4351 Pike Norwood LLC regarding 4351 Montgomery Road in declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4351 Pike Norwood LLC regarding 4351 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. 
Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4351 Pike Norwood LLC regarding 40, 4351 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Mrs. Franzen. I move we pass the ordinance. Motion by Mrs. Franzen to pass the ordinance. Mrs. Hoover. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Hoover. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen. Yes. Mrs. Hoover. Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is an ordinance rescinding the Community Reinvestment Area Agreement with Norwood Manor LLC and declaring an emergency. Mrs. Franzen? Uh, I move we suspend the rules and have all three readings. Motion by Mrs. Franzen to suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Ms. Royce? I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Royce. Any discussion? Mrs. Franzen. Yeah, just a note for, for everyone here who wasn't at the small business meeting and for those at home, these next three are all kind of in one big packet. We're just changing the CRA agreement with this to reflect that they have uh, two business, two side-by-side -side, uh, buildings that they are doing stuff with as opposed to just one. So just if you're curious, it's that's why the same address happens uh, a couple times. So Thank you changing the original agreement in order to do this one so therefore we need to close off the first agreement correct yes my understanding. yes any other discussion call the roll please mrs franzen yes mrs hoover yes Ms. royce yes mrs bowling yes mrs winterbauer yes mr girton yes all members present voting yes the motion carries please have all three readings of the ordinance Ordinance rescinding the Community Reinvestment Area Agreement with Norwood Manor LLC and declaring an emergency. Ordinance rescinding the Community Reinvestment Area Agreement with Norwood Manor LLC and declaring an emergency. Ordinance rescinding the Community Reinvestment Area Agreement with Norwood Manor LLC and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Motion to pass the ordinance. Ms. Royce. I'll move to pass the ordinance. Motion by Ms. Royce to pass the ordinance. Mrs. Hoover? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hoover. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Ms. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4631 Montgomery LLC regarding 4631 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Ms. Royce. I'll move we suspend the rules and have all three readings. Motion by Ms. Royce to suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Mrs. Bowling. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Bowling. Any discussion? Mrs. Bowling. Uh, I just want to clarify for those at home in case it was unclear earlier, uh, 4631 uh, and 4633 are uh, buildings next door to each other that are currently two separate entities that will behave under one <clears throat> business. And one of those addresses most recently was known as Gracious Feast and then adjacent. Thank you. Any other discussion? Motion on the floor by Ms. Royce is to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Seconded by Mrs. Bowling. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Please have all three readings of the ordinance. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4631 Montgomery LLC regarding 4631 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4631 Montgomery LLC regarding 4631 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4631 Montgomery LLC regarding 4631 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Mrs. Bowling. I move that we pass the ordinance. Motion by Mrs. Bowling to pass the ordinance. Is there a second? Ms. Royce. I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Royce. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. 
Mrs. Franson? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4633 Montgomery LLC regarding 4633 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Mrs. Bowling. I move that we suspend the rules and have all three readings. Motion by Mrs. Bowling to suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Is there a second? Mrs. Mrs. Hoover. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Hoover. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Please have all three readings of the ordinance. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4633 Montgomery LLC regarding 4633 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4633 Montgomery LLC regarding 4633 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a community reinvestment area agreement with 4633 Montgomery LLC regarding 4633 Montgomery Road and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Is there a motion to pass the ordinance? Mrs. Franzen. I move we pass the ordinance. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Franzen to pass the ordinance. Is there a second? Mrs. Bowling. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Bowling. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen. Yes. Mrs. Hoover. Yes. Ms. Royce. Yes. Mrs. Bowling. Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer. Yes. Mr. Gurton. Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is an ordinance authorizing the safety service director to enter into a termination agreement with Paycor Inc. and release of Paycor Inc. and declaring an emergency. Mrs. Franzen. Uh, I move we suspend the rules and have all three readings of this ordinance. Motion by Mrs. Franzen to suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Mrs. Hoover. Uh, second. Seconded by Mrs. Hoover. Any discussion? Um. Mrs. Franzen. I didn't know if uh, Mr. Powers and Mr. Skelly had anything to say about this, or um, I, I wasn't here, I think, when this was first discussed two council meetings ago, so I apologize. But... Um, not that I want to kick the ball around the room, but it's probably best <laughs> uh, by the law department. Fair. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the uh, yeah, this this we, we discussed this in executive session a couple of weeks ago. Um, this we finally managed to work out the exact terminology of the agreement, and so um, this will resolve our PR PIRA um, economic development agreement with with Paycor now that they've essentially moved out of their building, and so this will resolve, and and the city will recover um, some of the incentives that we had offered them. And we will um, part amicably, which is we managed to work out an agreement, which is really good. I will point out there is a clause in here on if you're asked about this, there's a paragraph in the agreement on the things that we should say about it. Um, and I would ask that everybody stick to that if somebody does bother to ask you about this agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Motion on the floor by Mrs. Franzen, seconded by Mrs. Hoover, is to suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Gurton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Please have all three readings of the ordinance. An ordinance authorizing the safety service director to enter into a termination agreement with Paycor Incorporated and release of Paycor Incorporated and declaring an emergency. An ordinance authorizing the safety service director to enter into a termination agreement with Paycor Incorporated and release of Paycor Incorporated and declaring an emergency. An ordinance authorizing the safety service director to enter into a termination agreement with Paycor Incorporated and release of Paycor Incorporated and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Is there a motion to pass the ordinance? Mrs. Winterbauer. Motion to pass the ordinance. Mrs. Franzen. I second. 
Motion by Mrs. Winterbauer, seconded by Mrs. Franzen to pass the ordinance. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Next item is a resolution creating an official standing meeting of the Norwood Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion DEI Advisory Board. Mrs. Hoover. I'd like to make a motion that we remove this from the, yeah. the, agenda. the agenda. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Hoover to remove this resolution from the agenda. Is there a second? Mrs. Winterbauer. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Winterbauer. Any discussion? I just wanted to clarify there was some confusion about whether or not council needed to create a resolution, and it was cl clarified that that was not required for the DEI to have a standing meeting. We currently do. It's the first Wednesday of every month. And right. the council does not need to do anything additional. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Motion on the floor by Mrs. Hoover, seconded by Mrs. Winterbauer, is to remove this resolution from the agenda. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franzen? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Moving on to administration reports. Mayor Schneider. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of Council, uh, I'll be brief. The design workshop that all of you attended, I know everybody was there, I saw everybody there. Um, three day, two, two and a half, three day design workshop, I think went extremely well. It is going to be really interesting to see what rewards we reap from this work that was completed and all the input that was put in. Um, bringing in experts from all over the nation to the city of Norwood to lend their expertise to come up with a plan and then the implementation of that plan is going to be really exciting over the next few years. And not only that, but I think that, you know, the chief talked about being able to go out and get grants. And I'll talk next about a grant that we just received. But that it's those tools that are necessary for us to be, continue to be, I was going to just say be successful, continue to be successful and reaching out and getting grants and bringing funding in. And whether in, in this situation, in the, in, when you talk about a workshop, a design workshop, there are so many funds that are out there that we can we can potentially bring to our community. And these are not all tax funds. I mean, there is these are private entities that that will support these type of endeavors. That's that's what I think is going to be really interesting over the next few years as that plan comes to fruition and as we. We really adopt some of the things. Are we going to adopt everything? Maybe not. But we're going to adopt a lot of it and figure out how to make our community even better and stronger. And that's really a strength of, of what that brought to us. I do want to mention that uh, Susan, Susan Hoover's ability to sort of quickly settle and, and straighten some things out in a meeting. Uh, there, you know, there's always, there's always in all of these, there's, there's different opinions, different ideas about thing, how things are going on. And, and one person came in, they weren't sure about all of it, and they had a lot of questions, and Susan was very capable <coughs> at, at sort of settling things down and correct and getting a correction in place. And Susan, but I appreciate that. That is a strength of your... Somebody else that had that ability was Helen Geraci, and you, you might have heard of Helen Geraci. She was a long-term council member, and she was very capable of putting people sort of back on track and in a, 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 the right way. And, Susan, I really appreciate that you were there and able to, to keep things going in the right direction. So the benefits from that are going to be, I think, going to, there's going to be so much payoff from all that work and time and effort that was done. When we talk about uh, grants, um, it's, it's interesting because I got a text and then I got a telephone call from Darren Hackworth and he said, I need to talk to you right away and I didn't have time to talk to him. But then later on, I talked to to our safety service director, and I said, what's up, Darren? He's trying to call me. And he's so excited. And, and Noah wouldn't tell me what Darren wanted to talk about. But Darren was so excited because they put in for a grant for energy efficiency improvements for the city. So we received this grant, and it was two, it's $247,428 that's coming into the city for energy, energy efficiency improvements. So, 
So it's, it's energy efficient lighting and, and different connecting all our, our HVAC systems. It'll save us, I think right now they're just estimating, you know, $20,000 a year. But really, once you put these all into place, the numbers start to flow, and then you can really look at it. But it's going to, it's fun that they're so excited about these things. And even the, the chief was talking about how many grants the fire department has been able to grab. So that it's there. Uh, I will stay on the fire department just for one minute. Millipore and Shepherd are the two chemical companies that, that we work with that, that are in our community and that our fire department works with. I have heard from the president of Shepherd Chemical about how, how professional and how dedicated and how good our friend. And recently I was in a meeting and there were, it was one of the people that her husband worked at, and works at Millipore. And all she raved about was our police or our fire department and the training that they do and how professional they are. She had heard that from her husband who's worked there for 30 years. So it really does go to show. And then one of the things that, that uh, Chief McCabe didn't talk about is all their community involvement. You know, we talk about we talk about our sense of community and we talk about giving back to the community. Our firefighters give back to the community a lot. Our police officers give back to the community a lot. So we've got to keep that in mind because these people are, are really great assets to our community. Um, let's see, the FRP, we heard a little bit of discussion about the FRP, the Financial Recovery Plan. It went to the Auditor of State. We received their first review back. So there's changes. They always find things within there that we've got to uh, get corrected. So we've got some work to, that needs to be done there. And then we hope to get it in front of the Finance Committee after all those changes are made. And that will be, it's a work in progress. You know, I, I'd like to say that we send it the first time to the Auditor of State and they send it back and say, good job. But that's not how it works. You know, it's going to take a little bit of effort on our part to get it taken care of. So the and I will be working on it, and all of our staffs and a lot of people within City Hall. Smith Road, Carthage, you see the, the curve work, the, the uh, ADA ramps and different things going in. Montgomery Road, you're seeing some of that uh, work started already. So those are those are big projects that are going on. We all know what's going on with, with um, the, the Norwood Lateral. That's all been out there. If you don't know, you've got your head in the hole in the ground and you've got problems. So over here, there's a lot that's going on there. And the last thing I'll talk about is the tree board met recently. Um, they are reviewing and working on the landscape plans for the Montgomery as we work on the, the Montgomery Road Park. Um, we have engineering that puts together an engineering design team with the landscape that puts that stuff together. But they are getting their input in on the specific trees and specific plantings, whether they're native or non-native. And they, they went into a whole discussion that was above my head when it comes to the landscape stuff. But um, it's going to be interesting as, as we work through those plans. So that's, that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the mayor? Okay. Just a quick reminder for everybody up here before you speak, make sure that your microphone is green so that everybody can hear you. I didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Mr. Bonzo. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, so we've had a busy couple of weeks at the uh, treasurer's office. So there are, uh, we've had some software issues that have kind of delayed e-file getting uh, implemented last year. We had um, quite a few people sign up and include, uh, in, in perform that. So we're uh, very pleased to get, we're very high, uh, wanting to get that back going. So, uh, but thankfully we did get the software stuff resolved. Uh, it took a monumental effort for Norcom, TA and others to help work with our vendor SSI to, uh, allow that to happen so we're really excited that if it's not live now it will be live very very shortly so you can just go to the tax department's uh, website uh, to see that uh, in addition uh, we do have a new uh, tax clerk uh, so reese um, feel free to come and stop by and say hello uh, anytime he is uh perform you know not that matt uh, not that I would tell you otherwise, but he is performing extremely well. We're very, very happy with him. Um, he's just fitting in so well with the team down there, and the team is really, really working hard uh, getting ready for tax season. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free just to call the tax office. Uh, Monet is probably who will answer, and she I get uh, texts and calls somewhat frequently about how wonderful Monet is to deal with. So uh, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have anything. But with that, that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bonzo? 
All right. Mr. Miracle. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to say thank you to the treasurer's office uh, for uh, helping to um, implement the training for uh, my staff with uh, Republic Bank. As you know, we're, we're going to be uh, transitioning uh, very soon with that. So thank you, Mr. Basel. Um, we had a good meeting t tonight with the uh, finance committee uh, team. And uh, we talked about the open POs from 2023 that we're working on and the uh, subsequent appropriations ordinance that I'll be bringing to um, to the next uh, meeting. Also, uh, continuing our assault on the uh, report on accounting methods, um, kind of our um, um, team is working on that. Uh, and um, we had a nice meeting today about it. And uh, um, matter of fact, uh, we have another meeting tomorrow regarding that. So we'll report on that uh, next meeting as well. And then uh, the end of March, um, I'm going to be attending the uh, local government officials uh, conference in Columbus. I think that's the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Miracle? All right. Mr. Moore. Uh, we've just been hard at work producing as many pages as we possibly can for your agenda. So <laughs> I hope it worked. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Moore? Moving on to unfinished business. Mrs. Hoover. Just have a couple. I am gonna say I'm really sad that we don't have the PowerPoint tonight because I was really grooving on that. Um, uh, Mr. Bishop uh, Williams did mention the Ward 4 community conversation. And I didn't have my mic on, my apologies. Ward 4 community conversation, really excited for this. We did this. Um, Several months ago, it was hot. I don't remember it when was, that was. It was warm. September? Maybe, yeah. So we're, this is a follow-up. Um, all elected officials are invited to attend. Uh, some NORD police officers will be there. We'll be talking about safety trends. Uh, is there an interest in doing um, <clears throat> neighborhood watch? I've had lots of uh, meetings with uh, Lieutenant Hoffman. Uh, he's been really diligent about making a really good program. So <clears throat> hoping folks can come out to that. Just reached out to the school, and this is going to be going out in all the parent folders. Is that still a thing? Do they still do parent folders? I uh, thought it was all digital now. Um, also, uh, really excited, uh, my conversations with Chief Sumner, with the police department, uh, and my interest in trying to get as many gun locks as possible into the community. Uh, they did a whole week-long uh, gun safety um, on social media, and want to remind folks that you can get free gun locks uh, from the police department during their office hours. Just go to the knock on their front door uh, and you can get it. Uh, really important that we we are responsible uh, with that. And then lastly, um, on the city website is a survey for uh, a mortgage or home buying workshop. Uh, the This is out of the um, housing committee. Um, we're doing, or we're, we're partnering with First Commonwealth Bank to provide a free um, lunch and learn or um, breakfast and learn about um, different banking options if we're buying a house and we want to know what does, what does the community want. So please answer the survey. It's up. It's live. We've gotten some responses, but we really need to have more and then based on that that's what the programming we will offer and what time of day as well uh that is all i have sir thank you thank you any other unfinished business mr Gurdon? um i've been informed that our uh, human resource manager is relocating and uh, thus the city's look <coughs> looking for a new person so if um, anybody knows somebody who can handle human resources for 220 something employees <laughs> city's in need so Please go online and look at the job and apply. Thank you. Any other unfinished business? Any new business? Mrs. Franzen. Yeah, um, I wanted to have a, a streets, parks, and infrastructure meeting. Um, I was thinking before council next week at 6.30. Would that work for those on that committee? Or not next week, but two weeks from now. Apologies. Uh, yes.
All good? Okay, cool. I'll pencil that in and probably just address some, uh, you know, some of the traffic and safety and issues that uh, residents have had, as well as uh, parks issues and potential new stuff coming to the parks um, here in the next year or so. Thank you. So to confirm, that'll be March the 12th at 6.30. March the 12th Chambers. at 6.30 in Council Chambers. Yes, thank Got you. It. Thank you. Any other new business? Mrs. Hoover. A couple quick ones as well. Um, Chief McCabe mentioned Narcan. You can uh, go to the Board of Health and get Narcan for free. Uh, I always try to have some in my vehicle. I've never had to use it, but that's probably because I have it. Um, that's one of the passions of Pam Mullen, who is our health commissioner, that um, that <laughs> Narcan be accessible and um, we are good stewards of our community members. Um, another quick little thing, um, there's some community project funding. These are big federal funding sources are going to be opening up. Uh, I spoke with Land, um, uh, Greg Landsman, Chief of Staff, earlier today about some good possible projects for Norwood. This is where we get some big, big chunks of money, 400000 to $3.5 I believe, is sort of the range. Um, and the um, congressional directed spending uh, from um, Sherrod Brown has also just opened. So there's going to be some great opportunities for Norwood to get some some big funding. Um, yeah, of course, now my mind's going with the uh, the uh, fire department training center. <laughs> hmm, thoughts, thoughts. So um, that that will be coming up, and I look forward to working with with the city to try to make sure we get as much money as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new business? All right. We have no communications. We do have one absent member. Do we have a motion to excuse the absent member? Mrs. Winterbauer. I have a motion to um, excuse Mr. Braden. Motion by Mrs. Winterbauer to excuse Mr. Braden's absence. I'll second the motion. Seconded by Mr. Garden. Call the roll, please. Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Girton? A motion that we adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Royce. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Franson? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Royce? Yes. Mrs. Bowling? Yes. Mrs. Winterbauer? Yes. Mr. Girton? Yes. All members present voting yes. The motion carries. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Mm -hmm.